Ang sarap-sarap masabi that it is well with my soul. At kung tayo po ay kumisa nababagabag, naliligalig, natatakot, nangangamba, kantahin nyo. Dahil habang inaawit natin, naaalala natin na tama, yun nga pala ang dapat na nararamdaman at kalagayan ng mga anak ng Diyos. At hindi lang dapat, it is well with my soul, it should also be well with other people's souls. Kaya meron tayong pananagutan sa ating sarili at sa kapwa natin para maging mga papayapa tayo. At yan ang pakay ng ating uh, ngayon ay tatalakayin ng pumagat, don't be the one. Galing ito sa walang kamatayang kasaysayan ng babaeng babatuhin sana pero hindi natuloy. It's an immortal story and we keep on drawing lessons and wisdom from this Jesus in action lesson. Marami ang Panginoong Yesus sa katuruan na sinabi ng kanyang bibig pero ito ginawa ng kanyang katawan, sinabi ng kanyang bibig, demonstration of Jesusness. And so this is very important. Dear God, we thank you for gathering us today. Thank you, Lord, for the wellness of our souls, even of our minds and bodies, and especially the wellness of our spirit. We ask you now to quiet our hearts and speak to us. Nawa Panginoon ay maging mapayapa kami, palakasin niyo po ang aming katawan, alisin mo mga nararamdaman ng aming katawan, mga alalahanin ng aming isip, at nang makapagtuon kami ng pansin sa inyo. Father, we ask you to speak to us powerfully to the point that our lives will be changed for the better, for this never-ending quest to become more and more like your Son, Jesus. And so speak powerfully, use your servant as your instrument, but be the voice that will give us life, that will give us empowerment and nourishment. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Siyempre, ang walang, kasay, uh, walang kamatayang kwento na ito ay magmumula sa John chapter 8. Walang kasawa-sawang balik-balikan natin ang kasaysayan dahil marami pang mga leksyon. John 8, 2. Then early the next morning, he went to the temple. The people came to him and he sat down and started teaching them. So there was Jesus and there was a teaching in progress. Umagang-umaga, nagtuturoan na. Meanwhile, umagang-umaga, meron na namang nabulatlat na problema yung mga relihiyoso sa kanilang bayan. John 8, 3 to 5. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law of Moses brought in a woman who had been caught in bed with a man who wasn't her husband. They made her stand in the middle of the crowd. Then they said, Teacher, this woman was caught sleeping with a man who isn't her husband. The law of Moses teaches that a woman like this should be stoned to death. What do you say? Maraming kasalanan, pero paboritong pag-usapan yung mga kasalanan na may kinalaman sa sexual relations and sexual activities. Bihirang chinichismis yung ang kasalanan ay pride. Bihirang chinichismis yung ang kasalanan ay arrogance o kaya ay stealing o kaya ay killing people. Pero laging napag-iinitan yung mga sins that have something to do with sexual activities. And this woman was not an exemption from this prying eyes of the religious. So there was suddenly a law and a legal issue that was brought up. There was a personal act against that law. And that law had a definite prohibition and an accompanying punishment. Mahirap yung dinala nila sa Panginoon na kaso. Kasi yung kaso, malinaw na malinaw na tinutukoy sa law of Moses, sa kanila mga traditions na ipinagbabawal ng batas na ito ang pakikiapid. So sabi, heto ang babaeng ito, huling-huli namin sa akto. Sabi ng batas ni Moses na alam nating lahat, dapat batuhin niya hanggang mamatay. Anong masasabi niyo? It was a very sensitive question for Jesus because now he has to side with or choose aside the law or the lawbreaker 
Kanino siya kakati o kakampi? Doon ba sa hindi matitibag na pader ng batas ni Moses na nakaukit sa bato? O para sa isang babaeng walang kalaban-laban, babae na nga siya, nahuli pa sa akto, wala siyang power, wala siyang kayamanan, wala naman siyang maibibigay kay Jesus. So anong mapapala ni Jesus na kampihan siya? It was always safer to be on the side of what was accepted by the mob, the law, the tradition. So here was a choice between the powerful legal system that could also destroy Jesus if they wanted, or a powerless individual. The point between tradition and religion, or the civil and personal liberty of an individual. A choice between harsh legalism or tender personal accommodation. In other words, Jesus was being asked, your status as teacher, your career, your credibility, or this worthless woman's life, your doctrine of love and forgiveness. Alam nila kasi ang doktrina ng Panginoon eh, a doctrine of forgiveness, accommodation, love, and nourishing of people. Eh, heto yung ubod ng bagsik na batas ni Moses, a tribal law when Israel was just a tiny tribe and not yet a full nation, and it was hundreds or thousand years old by then. So, ano ba ang papairalin ang isang pagkalumalumang batas na maaaring ayon at bagay sa isang maliit na tribal society, pero ngayon sa isang sophisticated full nation, ganun pa rin ba dapat ang pag-implement nun? But obviously, they were implementing it. They had many women who were stoned to death because of this same offense. So what was a stake? What was on the table was the old or our way or the new or your way, Jesus? That was the indirect question. May maliit na klaseng itinuturoan ng Panginoon, biglang inilagay doon sa kanilang lesson plan that day ang malaking usapin na ito. It was a very difficult question to tackle. It was a make or break situation. And from all angles, it looked like a lose-lose situation for Jesus. You could almost hear the critics say, Gotcha. Wala kang lusot. John 8.6 They asked Jesus this question because they wanted to test Him and bring some charge against Him. Yun. Ang tunay na dahilan, hindi nila inihahanap ng katarungan yung babae. Ang tunay na pakay nila gusto nilang si Jesus ay magkaproblema kung ano ang desisyon na bibitawan niya. If Jesus said, stone her to death, as the law required, He would contradict His own doctrine of love. You and I know, and you don't have to be explained to, that stoning, no matter where the rule comes from, is very unloving. But if Jesus said, stone her, or love her instead, He would break the law of Moses. At sino ang babangga sa law of Moses? The Jews would kill or die for a dot or an iota in the law of Moses. That there were not only ten commandments, there were more than six hundred other commandments that the priests, the Levites, the religious people had added to the burden of daily life. So on trial was the woman, seemingly, But really, a trial was Jesus. And more than that, on trial was the law of Moses and their tradition. And the question is, why has the law of Moses made these people very cruel? Anong uli ng relihiyon at pagkabiging relihiyoso ang magpapatigas ng puso ng mga mana ng palataya? na kayang-kaya nilang idiin at hingi ng kamatayan sa isang malagim na pagbato ng isang babaeng walang kalaban-laban. May babae ba naman na ambisyon na maging mga lunya, mag-prostitute, maligaw ng landas? Ano ang mga dahilan? Economic, social, emotional reasons why a woman would be pushed into such an unglamorous, in fact, a very dangerous situation 
Wala sa kanila yon. Bakit sa kanilang pagiging relihiyoso ang naging bunga tumigas ang puso? At gustong-gusto nila na i-implement yung napakalupit na mga batas na ito at wala silang pakialam sa mararamdaman at maging sa kamatayan ng isang kahabag-habag na babae. So on trial also was the community. Di nila sinadya pero sa ginawa nilang yon ang lahat ngayon ay nasa sakdal at ang lahat ngayon ay nililitis. The story sounds so remote. And yet, it is not. Because the same story happens in our lives today. This woman could be anybody in the church or in our community or family. Maybe a male, a female person, a young or an old person, whatever the crime. But somebody will say, this person has broken the law. And let's not talk about legal law now because legal law is separated from moral law. Let the legal systems take care of themselves. Pero sa church, machichismis, si sister ganon, nakita ko sa mall, may kaakbay. Si brother ganon, nakita ko sa dilim. Si ganito, si ganyan, may ganitong kwento. Nangyayari pa rin yan. And Jesus and His doctrine is put on trial again. What would Jesus do if Jesus was present when accusations today are being discussed and heard. Also on trial is not only the law of Moses or the Old Testament, but then the New Testament also. Remember, ang scripture ng mga taong ito nung panahon na naganap yung kwento ay Old Testament lamang, mostly the law of Moses. Hindi pa nasusulat nun yung New Testament. So kung gaano tayo ka ngayon ka-devoted sa New Testament, kung gaano tayo ka dito, ganun sila ka doon sa Law of Moses. And yet, did Jesus implement what the scriptures of their time said should be implemented? Yun nga ang gustong maging butas sa kanya ng mga nagsasakdal. Dahil halos natitiyak nila na hindi ipapa-implement ni Jesus yun. Dahil nga sa kanyang teaching of love and forgiveness. Pero pag hindi ipina-implement, Jesus could be accused of not obeying Scripture. Ang appreciate natin mga kapatid for discussion sake, kung gano'ng katindi at kabigat ang Old Testament na tinatawag natin ngayon, nung panahon nila, ngayon, Old Testament and New Testament combined, yun naman ang mabigat at matimbang sa atin. That's why many people will accuse the brother or the sister on premise of one verse. Sasabihin nila, sabi ng verse na ito, hindi yan dapat ginagawa. Bakit ginagawa ni brother ganon? Sabi ng verse na ito, dapat siyang itiwalag. Dapat siyang, yun na kasi, hindi ka naman pwede mambato na ngayon to death. Nag-iba na ang panahon. So, dapat siyang parusahan. Dapat siyang itreat as an unbeliever. Sabi ng ganitong verse. At naniniwala ang lahat sa verse na yun. Pero ang tanong, what would Jesus do if was present? Will He implement harsh verses? Like, would He implement the law of Moses? And of course, the community then is the equivalent of the church now. So the same trials happen, the same accusations, and Jesus who never changes must be heard. Ano ang gagawin niya? So there was suspense. They thought that they had brought Jesus between a rock and a hard place. John 8, 6. But Jesus simply bent over and started writing on the ground with his finger. Another lesson, another demonstration. He did not answer hastily. May lesson agad para sa atin mga kapatid eh. When asked maliciously, do not answer too soon. Sa ating buhay, si Louis XIV, the son the king of France, was famous for always saying, I shall see. Pag may nagsusumbong sa kanya, o ano pong gagawin niyo laban sa sinumbong ko, I shall see. May nangihingi sa kanya, o ibibigay niyo na po ba sa akin, I shall see. Hindi siya nagde-decide agad. Dahil mahirap umatras. So delay opening your mouth and do something wise. John 8, 7 to 8. 
they kept on asking Jesus about the woman. Finally, he stood up and said, If any of you have never sinned, then go ahead and throw the first stone at her. Once again, he bent over and began writing on the ground. Jesus did not judge the woman. Hindi siya sumagot sa tanong na babatuhin ba o hindi. Pag sinabi niyang batuhin, niya, okay tama na, di bali wala yung teaching mo on love. Pero pag sinabi niyang hindi, oh, you don't follow Moses, you don't follow the verses, you are not a good religious person. So by not judging, there was no fight with the woman. Or what she was even accused of. He did not ask that she not be stoned to death. Hindi rin niya sinabing, huwag niyong batuhin. That would fuel the accusations against him. Neither did he absolve her. There was no open fight with the mob. Can you imagine? By doing what he did, he was not fighting with the woman. He was not fighting with the accusers. He was very diplomatic. And yet, he did not nullify the law of Moses, at least with words. So there was no open fight with Moses and tradition. What did Jesus really do? He just set the qualification for judging and punishing sinners. He did not question the law. Wala kang mapapala na questionin mo yung law, babangga ka sa pader. Wala kang mapapala na bumangga ka sa mga verses, kasi nakamonumento na yan. Kaya tama o mali ang interpretation, monumento na yan. Babangga ka lang sa pader. Jesus set the qualification for casting the first stone. Sinlessness. Moral perfection. In effect, he nullified the law. Because no one could implement it. But he really never technically nullified it. He just disqualified everybody from implementing it. Jesus made the accusers and the judges fight with their own inner demons. Kaya naman galit na galit yung mga tao na yun doon sa babae. Kasi actually galit sila sa sarili nila. Hindi ba ang sabi, ang magdanakaw, galit sa kapwa ang magdanakaw? So yung mga galit halimbawa sa nangangalo niya, either naagawan niya ng asawa, kaya galit na galit, o naunahan siya sa pangaagaw, kaya siya galit na galit. O gusto-gusto niya mga niya, pero hindi kaya ng dibdib niya. Gusto lang niya, pero hindi niya magawa dahil hindi ganun kalakas ang tuhod niya para manindigan sa gusto niya. So galit na galit siya doon sa nakakagawa. Kaya galit na galit tayo doon sa ang daming tato, ang daming hikaw, ang daming mga kung ano nung mga suot. Siguro gusto rin natin, hindi lang natin magawa dahil doag tayo. I saw a play on Aswang many, many years ago and there was a very profound line there. Sabi nung isang character na lola siya ng Aswang, Kayo mga tao, galit na galit sa aming mga Aswang kasi nakikita nyo sa amin ang mga kaaswangan nyo. Kaya pangit ang drawing nyo sa mga Aswang kasi yan kayo pero inaasay nyo sa iba para hindi kayo ang masisi pero actually kaya kayo galit. Brothers and sisters, Bantayan natin kung saan tayo mga galit. Usually, nandun tayo at hindi lang natin madiretsyong magalit sa ating mga sarili. Yung mga sobrang walang takot gumawa ng mga bagay, ang lalaya na gawin ng gusto nila, nagsusuot ng pula, asul, sama-sama sa dam kanilang katawan, yung mga namimintas dyan, baka gusto rin nilang gawin. Hindi lang malakas ang loob. Kasi kung tunay na nakikita mo ang isang taong mali at wala kang inggit o hindi ka na Dama eh. Bakit ka magagalit? Dapat ka maawa ka eh. Bakit ka magagalit? So ang ginawa ng Panginoon, imbes na yung spotlight na inilalagay ng lahat ng sa babae, ibinaling niya sa mga tao. He threw them into an internal turmoil. He made them judge over their own selves. Suddenly, the focus shifted to the accusers. Suddenly, the accusers were on trial while being tasked to also be the judges over their own trial of themselves. The deadly pressure on the woman was instantly removed and redirected at her accusers. A master stroke, no less. 
Sinagot ang tanong pero hindi naman talaga sinagot to the point na pwede siyang i-demanda sa sagot niya. Do a Jesus. Whenever someone brings a charge against another person, do a Jesus. Sabihin mo, maling-mali talaga ang ginawa kung gusto mo sabihin. O ayaw mo nalang kumibo, gawin mo yung ginawa niya. So sabihin na lang natin, okay, kung sino na lang sa atin ang talagang walang kasalanan, eh bumato na doon sa taong yan. Kung nag-uusap-usap kayo, biglang darating si Sister Hoy, alam nyo ba kung anong kasalanan ni Sister A? O sige, sino ba sa atin dito ang nag-uusap-usap ang walang kasalanan? Batuhin na siya, simulan na, mauna na. Anong ginawa ng mga tao nung sinabi ni Lord na, Sige, ang walang kasalanan magsimula ng bumato. Hindi naman niya sinabing, kawawa naman yung babae, huwag niyong batuhin, lalo lang magagalit yung mga tao. Pag sinabi naman niya, huwag na natin sundin yung law of Moses, luma na yon. Siya na ngayon nga na madidemanda dahil binabaliwala niya yung verse. Pag sinabi naman ng batuhin natin, sige, babalikta rin niya yung kanyang katuroan. So ano ginawa ng mga tao, John 8, 9, the people left one by one, beginning with the oldest. At least may ginawan tama yung mga galit na galit na mga pulutong na ito. The people judged themselves correctly. There was no one to throw the first stone. And you know what was wonderful with that? Without anyone to throw the first stone, there will be no second person to throw the second stone, and there will be no third, and so on. Kaya lang dumadami ang bumabato, may nauuna. And the lesson is, don't be the one. Sabihin nyo sa katabi nyo with feelings, don't be the one. O alam na natin yung kapitbahay natin ang nangalo niya, don't you be the one to first to talk about it. O alam na natin yung hipag natin, pinaka, you know, pinagdududahan natin, don't be the one to first talk about it. O may kasalanan si sister ganon, litisin natin, dali natin sa board, pulpitohin natin. Ang sasabihin mo lang, don't be the one. Malaking pananagot ang mauna. At pag walang nauna, walang papangalawa. Tahimik ang mundo, it is well with my soul. Hindi ibig sabihin na kusintihin natin lahat ng kamalian, kung kamalian nga ang maituturing, pero hindi yun ang paraan. Kakalad ka rin mo sa publiko, ipapahiya mo, sasaktan mo, papatayin mo. That is not the Jesus way of correcting and improving lives. So no one in the bloodthirsty mob dared to be the one to stone the woman first. So don't you be the one. Pag nagkakape kayo sa office, may dumaan na kinakaingitan yung sobrang sexy, yung halos masubsub na sa laki ng boobs, don't be the one to first comment about it. Ang kailangan lang naman iba, may mauna eh. Yung medyo tumingin, medyo tumaway, may mauna lang, parang apoy nakakalat na yan. So, don't be the one. Hintayin yun yung ibang mauna kung gusto nila. Pero alam nyo mga kapatid, kahit may mauna pa man, unless yung nauna na yun, sinless, hindi ka pa rin dapat po mga lawa kasi mali ang tinatahak niyang landas. It's not the Jesus way. John 8, 9-11 Finally, Jesus and the woman were there alone. Jesus stood up and asked her, Where is everyone? Isn't there anyone left to accuse you? No, sir. The woman answered. Then Jesus told her, I am not going to accuse you either. You may go now, but sin, don't sin anymore. So Jesus laid the basic principles in dealing with sinners. Judge yourself first. Kahit ang kasalanan niya, sexual immorality, at wala kang ganon, at pasalamat ka kung wala kang ganon, pero wala ka na ba ibang kasalanan, wala ka bang pride, wala ka bang self-righteousness, Don't you steal. Don't you tell a lie. Lahat yan, kasalanan, iba-iba lang kulay. Don't you dare to be the first. Judge yourself first. 
At kung makita mo na may kasalanan yung iba na hindi mo kasalanan ngayon at hindi mo naging kasalanan sa nakaraan, pasalamat ka that up to now, hindi mo pa nagiging kasalanan yon Pero wala kang katiyakan na hindi ka madadapa bukas, next week, next month. While you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. You can never know what will happen. If you are sinless, then proceed to be the first to judge and punish the sinner. But if and only if you are sinless. Of course, the other principle is if you have sinned yourself, you cannot be the first to judge and stone a fellow sinner. Dahil yun yung sinasabing talbog sa akin, dikit sa iyo. Dinajudge mo ako, makasalanan ka rin, edi tatalbog yan, babalik lang sa iyo. Don't you be the one. Hold your tongue. Be still. Pray for yourself that you don't fall into the same temptations or the same trials. If the first one to judge and punish the sinner had also committed sin, let's say meron talagang nauna, ang lakas ng loob kahit siya mismo makasalanan, that person is disqualified and is out of order. Truthfully, everyone is disqualified. And you have no right to follow the example of the judgmental sinner because in the first place, hindi siya dapat ng una. This principle of handling so-called sinners will be applied even if what is broken is the law of Moses. The Lord did not implement the law. So will you say he's a lawbreaker? Let's hold that and discuss it later. Yung scriptures nila nung panahon nila, hindi in-apply. Kasi the scriptures say, stone her to death. Ngayon ang scripture natin, the same Old Testament and the New, will you apply a verse that will have a very harsh effect on someone, even if that someone was caught in the act of doing sin. Jesus showed us the way. And we will go back to the way of Jesus later. The principle will be applied even if what was broken was the law of Moses and tradition. And much less religious and denominational or sectarian administrative regulation. Kung yung law of Moses hindi in-apply dito, all other laws beneath it are less powerful to affect or to, to be affected, to be applied. Pero tatandaan natin na yung offense ng babae, hindi naman niya, hindi naman siya gumawa ng racket na naghirap yung buong community sa pandaraya. Hindi naman siya gumamit ng weapon of mass destruction. She was only selling the only thing left in the universe that she could sell, her body. She did not murder. She did not steal. Kaya iba-ibang mga crimes, syempre iba-iba yung application. But this time, Jesus was applying the law of love, forgiveness, accommodation to a person who has not offended the community as a whole but only dragged her own self in her own private life. If it was a private romance or a private practice of her profession, it was a private sin. Minalaki lang ginawang public ng mga tao. So, kanya-kanyang application kung ano-ano ang bigat. Pero ano talaga? Bakit hindi in-implement ang commands ni Moses? John 13, 34 to 35. Jesus speaks, But I am giving you a new command. You must love each other just as I have loved you. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. There is now a new commandment. It has been there since Jesus, therefore 2,000 years old ang commandment na ito. Sabi niya, I'm giving you a new commandment. Forget all the other commandments. This is the commandment I am replacing everything with. Love one another. You want to be known as my disciple? Don't be known na masungit ka, na mahigpit ka. Don't be known na conservative ka. Be known for your love. Na-internalize sa ba ito ng church? Apparently not. Kasi ang mga tao ngayon, ba nagka-problema? 
Naalaman mo yung anak mo, siya pala si Batman o si Darna. Sasabihin na tatay agad, anong sasabihin ng church? Yung asawa mo, biglang nagkamali, nagtaksil sa'yo, ang isyo agad, baka malaman ng church. Pag may nagawang kasalanan ng isang tao, ang paproblemahin agad, baka tayo mapulpito, baka tayo mabulletin board, baka tayo madisiplina, di ba ganon? So, in times of troubles like this, in times when people fall, especially morally, and especially in sexual issues, ganun pa rin ang tao ngayon, dun pa rin galit na galit sa sexual issues, when times of one's fall, a church member's number one problem is the church. Yun ang pinaproblema agad. Baka malaman ni elder, gano, baka malaman ni pastor. Yung mga iba nga, naninigarilyo lang, nakatalikod, biglang humarap ka, ikaw yung pastor, kulang lang lulo ninyo si Garilyo eh. Dahil anong sasabihin ni pastor, naninigarilyo ako? Pag ang tao may mga lapses at active church member, bumagsak siya, nalaglag siya, nagkaroon siya ng kasalanan, hindi niya iniisip yung church as where I can take refuge, where I can get help, where I will be loved and understood and cared for. No, natatakot siya sa magiging judgment ng church sa kanya. Bakit pa may church kung ganun? Kaya sabi ni Lord, there's a new commandment, it's a commandment of love. Hindi yan commandment ng pangungunsinte. You don't judge but neither do you condone. Hindi ka naman nangungonsinte, pero huwag kang mag-judge, huwag kang mag-condemn, at huwag kang mambato. Malay mo naman, kaya pala nakakaganon yung tao, kulang lang sa love. Kulang sa guidance. Kulang sa support. And before you judge a prostitute, itanong mo muna, ano nagtulak sa kanya, ba't siya nagkaganon? Meron ba naman batang babae na, bata pa lang ang ambisyon niya? Siyempre, maging stewardess. Maging beauty queen. Hindi maging prostitute. Pero may mga nasa sadlak sa ganun kahit nila ayaw. Inuunawa ba yon O pinag-uusapan? Yan talaga ang isang malaking hiwaga, mga kapatid. Yung church na nagmamahal dapat, yun ang nagjudjudge pag nagkamali ka. Kaya doon ka number one nagtatago eh. Para bang pupunta ka lang sa church pag perfect yung buhay mo, pero pag may mga mali-mali na magtagu-tagu ka muna dahil baka ka mapag-usapan, yun ang dapat ituwid. And the church only has to go back to the teaching of Jesus. You go to church to love and to be loved. Not to judge and be judged. And this will stop only if people obeyed the now only commandment of Jesus, love one another. Tapos sabihin, eh bakit po sabi ng Ephesians, sabi ng Corinthians, sabi, teka, di ba sabi nga ng law of Moses, batuhin, hindi nga ipinabato ni Lord eh. Sino ba dapat ang manaig? yung ipinakali na ulinaw na na example ng Panginoon o mga verses na may mga specific context, specific recipients, specific situation, and specific ef efica efficacy. New universalize kasi natin lahat yung mga utos. And yet, the same people who will insist on stoning people to death, eat shrimp. Eh alam nyo ba na ipinagbabawal sa Leviticus na kumain yan? Eh, lalo na kung bagoong, di ang dami nun. The same people na i-insist, hindi pwede yan, kailangan ipilpotohin, kailangan itiwalag. They eat pork. Eh, ang linaw-linaw naman na hindi ipinapakain yan. Ang isa sa Ten Commandments, ang Sabat dapat Sabado. But the same conservative Christians go to church on Sunday, not on a Saturday. Bakit may mga kautusan na kaya nilang kalikuran, at lulunin, pero merong ipinagpipilat ang i-implement. Usually, may kinalaman na naman sa sexual activity. The same vice just keeps repeating. So, the commandment that supersedes all other commandments, old meaning before Jesus, from the prophets, from the Old Testament, and new meaning after Jesus, from the apostles, the commandment that supersedes all other teachings and doctrines, all other ways and methods, is a commandment to love. Ipinakita ng Panginoon, law of Moses, hindi in-implement dahil may bago ang law, law of love. Mamaya yung mga disciple niya after Jesus, mas marami na ng mga kahigpitan na pinauso. So pagka nalilito kayo, ang susundin, the example and the teaching of Jesus because He is the Savior. 
He is the Son of God. He is the perfect one. No prophet, no apostle could stand side by side with Jesus. So kung may sinabi si Jesus na parang kinokontradik ng sabi ni ganitong propeta, ng ganitong kung sinong disciple, sabi niya, eh, sino ba yung Savior dito? Sino bang dapat masunod dyan kung may conflict ang interpretation? The teaching should not have conflicts among themselves, but the conflicts are always in the interpretation. So what is the best interpretation? The interpretation that implements the doctrine of love. At pagka ganun, the church will be non-threatening. Ano anak, buntis ka? Nine years old ka pa lang. Di ba? So ang sasabihin agad na nga, let's go to the church and find comfort. Let's go to the church and be prayed for. Let's go to the church at hanapan ito ng solusyon. Hindi yung, naku, pag-uusapan tayo sa church. Baligtad, di ba? Because many church people are judges. That must change. The church must be the sanctuary of love, of unconditional acceptance. Not the end of it, but the beginning of a person's development, restoration, and growth. But you begin with loving, not with setting unreachable standards. Hindi na nga tayo pinaakyat sa langit para makarating sa Diyos. Si Jesus nga ang bumaba para tayo sa lubungin at buhatin pa akyat. That's why yung church dapat hindi unreachable. Kung meron ka dapat katakutan pag nagkamali ka, pwede yung mga outsiders pero hindi dapat yung church kasi yung dapat na nagmamahal at nag-aaroga sa'yo. Jesus is the measure of all things. And love is the greatest. Sabi nga yan sa 1 Corinthians 13, nabasahin ninyo, homework, reviewin ang napakagandang mga katuruan tungkol sa pag-ibig. But Paul says, all glorified religious and spiritual gifts and accomplishments are nothing without love. Pag-ibig pa rin ang lahat-lahat. At sabi ng 1 Corinthians 13, 13, For now there are faith, hope, and love. But of these three, the greatest is love. Not doctrine, not discipline, not verse, not the law, not stoning people to death, the greatest is love. So stone, will you stone somebody? Don't be the first to do it. Will you love? Yes. Because Jesus says, God is love. You will be known as my disciples, not for your great memory of Scripture, although that is nice to have, not for your strictness, not for your Victorian and Puritan stand on everything, but for your love. Romans 12.10, Love each other as brothers and sisters, and honor others more than you do yourselves. Honor others. Hindi lang sinabi, honor the honorable. Honor even those you think are dishonorable. We owe it to ourselves to honor one another. And remember, you could not stone unless you were sin sinless. You could not stone if you were sinful. Matthew 7, 1, Do not judge so that you may not be judged. In Matthew 7, 5, You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. So, why stone sinners? Why talk about sinners? Remember, you could love sinners even if you were sinful. Hindi ka pinagbabawalan ng umibig, pero pinagbabawalan ka magjudge. Therefore, loving is more appropriate, more doable more acceptable and more godly than stoning fellow sinners. In fact, the more sinful you are, the more you should love. Don't burn the bridge over which you too must pass. At sabi sa Proverbs 10, 12, love covers all offenses. Di ba mga magulang, dahil mahal nyo ang inyong anak, kahit anong nga pagkakamali niya, nahahanapan nyo na excuse eh. 
Kaya pagka anak mo nga yung laging hindi makasapasa sa school, ang tawag mo doon, slow learner. Di ba? Kasi anak mo yun eh. Pag anak mo yung nababalot ng galis, allergy. Anak mo kasi. Pero pagka iba, ang tawag mo doon, buhaneng baligtad, butlig, galis. Di ba? Pero pagka anak mo, may allergy ang anak ko. Anak mo kasi. Kasi mahal mo. Hinahanapan mo ng luna, sinahanapan mo ng dahilan. Paano tayo iniibig ng Diyos? Hindi natin alam yan kasi hindi tayo Diyos. At kaya lang nating maunawa yung kayang magkasya sa maliit nating utak. Pero kung hahanap tayo mga kapatid ng konting clue kung paano magmahal ang Diyos, the closest we can see is how parents love their children. Paano magmahal ang isang ama o isang ina sa kanyang anak? Tatanungin ko kayo kung kayo ang magulang. Ang anak nyo, biglang naging unwed mother. Ipapamalitan nyo ba sa barangay pag-uusapan nyo? No. Kasi mahal nyo eh. May anak kayo na drug addict. Talagang adik-adik. Ipamamalitan nyo ba? No. Sasabi mo kasi medyo may konting maladjustments. May konting substance abuse. Kung ano-ano mga pagsasabihin nyo. Dahil anak nyo, ganun ang pag-ibig na dapat natin ibigay sa ating mga kapatid sa church. May nalaman kang kapintasan, hindi mo ipamamalita para ikasisira pa niya. Kung maaari mo siyang iprotect, tulungan, makarecover, mas tahimik, mas mabuti. Kung paano mo itatrato ang sarili mong mahal sa buhay, kung siya ang nagkamali, ganoon natin itrato ang mga kapatid natin sa Panginoon. Dahil ang totoo, yun ang mga kapatid natin sa Spirito. So hindi dapat pinag-uusapan. Next time around, pag may magsisimula, sasabihin mo agad, sinless ka ba? Alam na yung ibig niya sabihin, don't be the one. Huwag kang magsimula ng usapan na ito dahil gustong-gusto kong ituloy. Diba? So huwag mo simula, natutukso ako. Pigilin natin agad kasi dapat nating supilin yung mga impactong nakatira sa ating puso. Kasi pag sinunod natin yan, sila ang mananaig sa ating buhay. We should treat the offense of our brothers and sisters as a family project to protect from further damage, to heal, to solve, and to set this person on his or her feet again to have a new life. Don't ever be the one to judge. You have no right. And you will only go deeper into your own judgment of yourself. Ito lang naturo ni Jesus na ito ang dibdibin natin. I-preach kaya linggo-linggo, 52 Sundays a week, uh, a year. Kasi ito ang alam na alam natin, pero laging nakakalimutan. Ang bilis natin mag-judge, ang bilis mag-usap-usapan, magkwento-kwentuhan, ang bilis bumato. So remember this title, lagi ha? Ano sasabihin niya sa inyong katabi? Ulit. Don't be the one. Huh? Hindi pinapaulit ang 1 Corinthians 13. Don't be the one. And especially tell yourself, every time in the morning when you face yourself in the mirror, you say, don't be the one. This morning, when I go to my friends, I won't be the one to begin a, judge, a judgment proceeding. Tonight, when I go to the prayer meeting, I won't be the one to first talk about sister ganon and brother ganon. Don't be the one. Jesus hates it. Love instead, because love is the greatest. Ama namin. Ipaalala nyo nga po sa amin, na si Jesus na aming tagapagligtas ang dapat sundin, hindi kung sino-sino. Na yung turo niya sa pag-ibig ang mangingibabaw, kahit ano pang verse o ano pang doktrina, because it is the new commandment that was given us. Turuan niyo kami na mag-contribute, Lord, sa atmosphere para yung church maging loving, caring, nourishing, instead of judgmental and harsh and cruel. Turuan mo na habang nagiging relihiyoso kami, kami bumabait, hindi nagiging masungit, Maunawain, hindi mapaghusga, tulad ng Panginoong Yesus. Pagbulay-bulayan natin itong mga kapatid at lalo na sa ilang saglit na katahimikan, ihingi natin ang tawad kung meron tayong hinuhusgahan. Napakadaling makalimot at maging mapaghusga. Pero laging tinitang na ng Panginoon na ating puso. Huwag kayong bumato ng batong babalik din sa inyo dahil makasalanan din pala tayo. Dear God, Teach us to be sensitive against the temptation to be judgmental and to talk 
to carelessly gossip and judge people. Teach us, Lord, to be quiet and not to be the first, to throw the first stone. Be alone with the Lord for a while. Reflect on the love of Jesus. Yung itinuturo na ito ni Lord ay hindi lang para i-apply natin sa iba, kundi para i-apply din ang iba sa atin. And think of yourself as needing protection, needing love and care and forgiveness because this is for you. This is for me. Dear Lord, embrace us with your love and let your wisdom prevail in the way we deal with our fellow men and fellow women.